Hey everybody, welcome back to Funny Bug Bees and Woodworks. My name is Cliff. Uh, before we get started on today's tutorial, I wanted to let you guys know of a special that we've got going on on our website, funnybugbees.com. It's called uh, Get Deep Into Spring. So all deeps that we sell, uh, 8 and 10 frame and 5 frame, well 5 frames are cheaper, but all 8 and 10 frame deeps are on sale between now and February 28th for $15 flat. It's a great price, take advantage of it. You can visit our website right here. Today's tutorial is going to cover a topic that I'm asked about quite a lot, and that's uh, how I fold the metal corners uh, on the uh, outer hive covers. Uh, it's really simple to do. Uh, it, it doesn't take but a couple of minutes, and today I'm gonna to show you how to do that. So stick around, and I hope you enjoy the how-to. All right, typically when you're working with outer hive covers, you're going to use either an aluminum flashing product. Um, we actually use this product. It's uh, coated vinyl on one side, it's white, and aluminum on the other. Uh, what you're going to need to do when you make your outer hive covers is cut this at least one inch larger length and width wise than your outer cover. And, and that's what we do here. We use a one inch lip. So these are cut uh, one inch larger than whatever hive top you're making. So you can refer to some plans for that to see what size hive top you have. And just to add two inches for width and two inches for length that'll take care of your lip. So once you've got that cut, we'll move to the next step. Okay guys, so real quick, um, the size that you cut your metal sheet is gonna vary greatly. So I'm not going to give you dimensions for this. Uh, for my purposes, I'm for the eight frame, for instance, my eight frame outer hive covers, uh, I'll need a piece that's 18 and a quarter by 24 inches of this flashing to make the roof and that includes the two inches on the length and the width for uh, the the fold over so just check your check your plans uh, different people use different joinery method methods to attach the plywood top to the frame uh, for that cover and that can that can cause your dimensions to be off somewhat so just make sure you're cutting uh, two inches wider and two inches longer than your finished hive top cover is going to be so let's go ahead and get mine marked out. That's the next step and what you'll want to do next as well. Okay, so what I've got here, this flashing that I purchased comes in a 24 inch wide roll. So what I need to do is come over 18 and a quarter and, uh, and just grab one line. I never have to cut this uh, in the other dimension because it comes already in a 24 inch roll and I make all my lids, um, uh, eight and 10 frame lids require a 24 inch piece. Um, any 19 and 7, 7 8 inch hive that you uh, make hive tops for is going to take a 24 inch piece of flashing if you use the same joinery that I do and uh, we'll cover that at another time. So what I've got to do is cut over 18 and a quarter inches, mark a line. I use a pencil just so I can get nice and thin for this particular step. and. Uh, and mark that, and then you're just going to take you're just going to take a straight edge. Any straight edge will work, and uh, connect your two feet, your two pencil marks, and inscribe your line. And so that's what I'll do now. So this is what you want to end up with. You've got a line scribed. It's 24 inches this dimension, 18 and a quarter this way, and that's what I need for my needs. I've got that marked out. Now we'll cut it and we'll move to the next step. All right, now we're just going to cut the metal sheet on the, uh, on the line that we've scribed. Exactly on it if you can. Try to be as close as possible. Just get you some sheet metal shears. With some, with some sheet metal products, you can actually score it with a razor knife and then bend it. And it, it just depends on how thick your stock is. I usually always just cut mine. Now that's done. So the next step is to mark a one inch line, one inch from the inside of each edge. That'll be where we bend this stock at. So we'll do that now. All right, so now what we're gonna do is just go around and mark a one inch line on each of these faces. Most of you may not know this, but rulers, most rulers are exactly an inch wide. Most people have never taken the time to, to see that. So since we're making a one inch mark, 
All we need to do is line the ruler up with the outside edge of our stock and then scribe a line right down the ruler. That'll give you a one inch mark, a line one inch from, from the edge. Do that really quickly all the way around. Save you a bunch of time now if you guys didn't know that already. Uh, some people don't. Rather than having to measure each measure, put a check mark, measure it again somewhere down that same line, and then scribing those two lines together, this will save you a bunch of time. There we go, just a couple of seconds. We've got a line one inch from each edge, and that's where we need to make our bends. There's two ways you can make your bends. The first way and the way that I recommend, because that's how I do it, is to use a metal brake. Um, it's just, it's, it's not, it's faster, not much faster though, um, but it is more accurate uh, and it makes it easier to see your line. So uh, if you want to use a metal brake, you can. For the video, since most people don't have a metal brake, I'm going to actually do it um, how most people do it, and that's by using the edge of a table or the edge of your table saw. So we'll go ahead and get on that now. All right, so once you've scribed your lines, the only thing you need to do is line each line on an edge up with the edge of your table. Get as close as you can. And then you're just going to bend it over with your hand. So hold, hold it flat and tight and bend it over. Don't try to bend it all over in one spot all at once. Go down the line a little bit at a time. Just bend it a little bit until you're at the end and then start coming back again. This time getting that corner more crisp. There you go. So what you have now is your first bend on the first corner. Rinse and repeat that for the other long side. Make sure you line them up exactly. The, the better you line this up, the better the top's gonna fit. Just go down and do it slowly, a little bit at a time. And then work your way back up, bending it the rest of the way. There you go. Now you've got both long edges bent. Now we need to do the short edges. The easiest way to do this, because you've already bent the long edges, is to flatten them out. You just wanted that crease in it, so now flatten those corners back out a little bit. Not the whole way down, just a few inches to get it flat. It'll make it easier to bend this corner. Line up your lines again. And bend it over. Just like you did on the other side, on the long end ends. Go back the other way and bend it the rest of the way down. That's three corners. Now we'll do the fourth corner. Again, bend them flat. It just makes it easier at the corners. Line up your lines. Start your bend. Move up. And then 
come back the other way again, bending it all the way over. All right, now you've got all four corners bent. Now we'll get you some close-ups on what you need to do next. This is the tricky part. All right, so now you've got all four sides bent on a straight edge. So then the tools you're gonna need for the next step are a pair of needle nose pliers or some sort of pliers with a long, a long nose and a craft hammer or any hammer will do. The trick to being able to do these corners is, and let me zoom in for you here. The trick to being able to do these corners is to take your pliers, okay, and make a crease. This is a 90 degree angle, this corner. So to cut that in half, we wanna do a 45 degree crease. And the way that you do that is by creasing from this outside corner to where those two bends intersect on the inside. So you put your pliers just in a line between those two points and just take your finger and bend it. That's what you'll end up with. Now what you want to do is bring these two edges together. Just bend it like that with your hand and then take your pliers and finish bringing that pleat together and then squish it down with your pliers. Let me give you a close-up of what this is going to look like. There you go. That's what you're looking for. Show you the inside. Okay. All right, so once you get that crease in that corner like that, you're just going to take your pliers and grab it at the base, okay, and bend it right over to get it started like so. So once you've got this started, you can bend it over with your finger, like that, and now what you have is your corner. But that's not quite good enough, so what we're gonna do is use the craft hammer and make it nice and flat and square, and I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, so now that we've got the corner pressed down just like that, we're gonna take that corner and we're gonna put it on the edge of our bench, like so. Take your craft hammer. Tap it flat. Let me give you a close up of this. Okay, so what you can see, we've just tapped that corner flat with the hammer. It's a perfectly formed corner. Now you just rinse and repeat that for the other four corners and this lid will slip right over your outer cover then you can attach it with screws. I'll do one more for you so you can see it again. You've got the corner you've pre-bent with your two creases. Take your pliers, intersect that 90 degree angle halfway through. Let me give you a close up of that. Okay, I've just, I've just got it exactly in that corner. And then you're just gonna bend it. That's all there is to it. That puts a small crease right there in the corner. Just like so. Take your fingers and start bending those edges towards each other. And when they get close, take your pliers, bring the two corners together squeeze and then squeeze it the rest of the way down forming that sharp edge then you're just going to take your finger and start the bend like so okay then place it back on the corner of your table now just take your craft hammer get that nice and pushed up against the corner and tap it down. And what you end up with is a perfect corner. 
which now we have two of on this. I'll show you just a close up of that one. There you go. It's exactly what you want to do. It's very simple. It takes just a few seconds per corner. It's really easy to do. The whole process to do this whole lid shouldn't take you more than, than five minutes. Okay? If you have any questions about it, you can post them in the comments below. All right, guys. So that's it. That's all there is to it. It's really simple. It's super easy. Anybody can do it. Just a couple of times practice maybe. It shouldn't even take you a few times to practice this. If you follow this procedure, fold all four sides, and then make those 45 degree bends with your thumb and a pair of pliers and squeeze it together, it'll fold right over. Super easy to do. Anyway, I hope this video helps you guys out, especially you guys who have never done this before or just looking for information. Please visit funnybugbees.com. This article will be up there. There's a ton of other information there as well for beekeepers, recipes for food to feed your bees and pest control articles and, and especially equipment. Um, as always, there is a coupon code right here that'll get you 10% off outer hive covers, which is in the hive components section of our website. Thank you guys for visiting. Please, if you found the video useful, hit the subscribe button, hit the notify button so you get notified whenever we post new content, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.